this video, I want to quickly sketch some common misconceptions in studying words. Some of them may be familiar to you, but these are errors in thinking that need to be avoided. I think you'll see pretty quickly that despite sounding sensible, these ideas about words and their meaning just don't work. Here's our first one. The idea that common roots can be mixed and matched for the real meaning of words. Now this is itself a very common idea, but what do we mean by it? Well, in Genesis 2, 7, for example, the Hebrew word used for God's creation of Eve from Adam's side is bana. Notice that the consonants are b, n, and h, bana, to build. So, in a sense, God builds Eve from Adam's side. Now there's another Hebrew word, bina, that shares those three consonants, b, n, and h. Bina is the word for understanding or intuition or perhaps intelligence. The idea that the fact that these two words share three consonants and that that somehow means their, their meanings are related to one another would yield an interpretation something like this, that we would conclude from Genesis 2-7 from the Hebrew text that women are just inherently more understanding than men. What basis would there be for concluding that? Well, they share three consonants and this is the Word of God. So somewhere hidden in the Hebrew text in this mystical language of Hebrew with these amazing Hebrew letters, somewhere in there, there's a relationship between these two words. And that's what God's trying to tell us because they have three of the same consonants. Now that's pretty much nonsense. And it's easy to show you in English that languages just don't work this way. Let's try it in English using consonants. Let's take build, B-L-D. What possible relationship inherently would there be between build and bald? How about built, B-L-T? How is that inherently related to bullet or ballet? I could produce hundreds of examples like this, and even in Hebrew where the meanings would be opposite. It sounds silly because it is silly. Languages just don't work this way. Let's try another red flag. The sound of Hebrew words can be matched to the sounds of words in another language to produce meaning. Here's an example from Ezekiel 38 and 39. Some English translations have Gog, Prince of Rosh. Now, the Hebrew word behind this English translation, transliteration really, of Rosh is in fact the Hebrew word that sounds like Rosh. That's the way it's pronounced. So the idea here is that, hmm, Gog, Prince of Rosh, the Hebrew word Rosh, what does that sound like? Well, that Hebrew word Rosh sounds a lot like Russia. Folks, Hebrew and Russian are two completely different languages. They have no relationship to one another. One is Semitic and the other is not. The fact that two words in two entirely different languages have the same collection of sounds does not mean that their meanings are transferable. Now this same passage has uh, makes reference to Meshach and Tuval and by the same logic, Meshek sounds a lot like Moscow, and Tubal sounds a lot like Tobolsk. Again, Hebrew and Russian have no relationship to one another. If I had an English word with one set of sounds and a word in Chinese with a, the same set of sounds, we can't assume that both sets of sounds mean the same thing. Let's look at it in English and Hebrew. Illustrate the example again. Hebrew yam, y 
and M are the consonants. Well, do those Hebrew consonants, yam, does that mean the same thing that English yam does? No, yam in Hebrew refers to the sea or a body of water, not a vegetable that you would eat. S-O-D in Hebrew. Well, I wonder if that word in Hebrew means dirt, because that's what it means in English. No, Hebrew sod refers to a council or an assembly. Regal. Well, I wonder if regal in Hebrew means to wriggle. No, it doesn't. Regal in Hebrew means foot or leg. Third red flag, the idea that a word can have many meanings, but that they are all reducible to one root or basic meaning. Here's an entry from the Theological Word Book of the Old Testament. There are six Hebrew words listed here. You'll notice if you look at the English letters for them that all six of these words share three consonants. Those consonants are H, P, and K. All six of these words are sort of built from that root. Now if you look at the meanings, contrary, overthrow, crooked, overthrow again, stocks, as in what you'd put prisoners in, and perversity. Can you really say that you could look at all these words and come up with one basic idea that is germane or relevant to all of them? Well, I would doubt that you could and have it make any sense, but even if you could, think about what you're doing. Contrary could be a positive or negative thing, positive or negative context. Same thing with overthrow. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Now, perversity is pretty bad, but stocks, let's say you were putting in a, a prisoner into stocks that deserved it. That would be a good thing. Crooked doesn't necessarily have to mean something abstract like deceitful or dishonest. It could just refer to a shape of something. What I'm getting at here is that if you took all these words and sort of smashed them together to produce one root meaning and then took that root meaning back to the passages where all these words are used in, you have to completely ignore, in fact throw away, the context. Context is what determines meaning in any language. Not something like this. Context is not something that we want to throw away. It's something we want to make central. Our fourth red flag goes like this. Lemmas with identical spellings must have a common root meaning. In other words, Hebrew words that are spelled the same must surely be related in some way. That really isn't true, but let me show you with an example. The notion that lemmas with identical spellings have to be related or have a common root meaning is also a false idea. Now this is different from our first one. Our first example, bana and bina, shared three consonants, but there was one extra consonant between them. Sometimes you have Hebrew words that are exactly the same in spelling. Do they have to be inherently related? Let's take H-L-L, -L, halal, in Hebrew. This word can actually mean, according to some lexicons, three things. To shine, to praise, or to be insane. Now the reason you get such a variation here is because halal really isn't one word. Halal has a homograph. In fact, two homographs. There are homographs, you, maybe you would be more familiar with the term homonym, in Hebrew, just like there are in English. Words that are spelled the same, but have entirely different meanings. 
no relationship to each other at all. Let's look at some examples. Look at this set of words. The first word, B-A-S-S, -S, does that refer to an instrument or a fish? B-O-W, does that mean to pay homage to someone or is it a weapon? The next one, is that a smorgasbord or does it refer to getting punched? Another three, contract, is that a legal agreement? Or am I referring to contracting a disease? D-O-V-E. Did I just go into the water or am I talking about a bird? M-O-B-I-L-E. Is it a baby toy or is Junior just really fast? Another set. Am I rejecting something or someone? Am I refusing them, or am I talking about the trash? ROW, is that a line, a big fight, or something I do to propel a boat? And the last one, is that something tied around something else, or am I referring to an injury? These are all homographs in English. Hebrew has them as well. Words that are spelled exactly the same, but that are entirely different. They are unrelated, not related. Their meanings are not transferable. We need to keep this in mind. Our fifth red flag. When a word has many meanings, its real meaning is found by combining all the possible senses of the word. Take, for instance, the Hebrew word kavod. Now in Hebrew this means glory, as in the glory of God, the glory in the tabernacle or the temple. It can refer to honor, or something that's important, or great wealth. So are we to conclude that if the word kavod is used of a man, that that man is an important, honorable, wealthy, godly person? No. There's no reason to combine all the possible meanings of the word into one unit and then say that's the meaning of the word. Meaning is determined by context. The reason that a word can be understood in different ways is because words are used in different contexts. We would do well to remember that. Let's try this one in English too. If I take the word board, B-O-A-R-D, it can mean these five things and a few other things. A piece of sawed lumber, a group of people in a supervisory role, an exam like the college boards, a wall for writing, right on the board, or daily meals and expenses, room and board. Would we in English, when we see the word B-O-A-R-D, would we think, well, the word here must mean or speak to all these things in this sentence or this paragraph or this passage? No, we would never approach English this way. We shouldn't approach Hebrew this way either. Again, you don't need to memorize these red flags, but I'll be referring to some of these ideas in future videos when we look at examples in our word study methods you need to have these things in the forefront of your mind to at least try to avoid using these approaches